morning and welcome to our online worship. We are delighted that you have joined us this morning at Christ Lutheran Church. If you are new to us, we'd love to hear from you. So please send us an email to office at clchr.org. If you'd like to connect with a group, with a small group online, uh, we can do that as well. So please let us hear from you. If you're a regular, you might know that you have received a bulletin in the email. It should have come to your email address on Friday. If it's not there, you might look in the junk uh, file folder and see if it's from Sam, if you'd like to follow along with us on that. And then lastly, we welcome Jeff Kelty today to the pulpit, and he will be sharing a message this is Jeff's last sermon with us. Next week we give him a sending. So please keep him in your prayers. And again, welcome to worship. We begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of Almighty God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace of God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have attained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you would join me in prayer. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as your disciples, the disciples of your Son, Jesus the Christ, to love the world with compassion, with constancy, and that through our love for the world, your name would be known throughout the earth. This we ask, O oh Lord, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The gospel I've picked for this morning is from Matthew, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them, and early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, Peter became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, 
Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the Gospel. Praise to you, o Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Jeff Kelty, your interim youth and family minister for just a little longer. It is a gift to be asked to speak today, and I pray that my words will be pleasing to God and to your ears. It has been a blessing to be here these last 15 months. I thank you all for your help and your support as we have journeyed through some ups and some downs. It was a rainy October morning in 1971 as I loaded the last few things in my 63 VW Bug, saying goodbye to my mom and sisters and my best friend Todd in the driveway of our family home. Rod Stewart's Maggie May was playing on the radio as I pulled out that morning, and to be honest, I cried in fear of what was about to happen to me all the way to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I was headed on an adventure to travel around the country working and seeing the sights as this timid young man had really never been anywhere or traveled any further than west than Scranton, Pennsylvania. I had set up people to stay with along the way, but no real definite itinerary. For 11 months I wandered this great country, 42 states, five jobs, countless experiences, both good and not so good, incredible people and a few not so credible people and places and food like I had never experienced before. I saw new mountains and deserts, plains, forests, and a new ocean. Change. A little more than a year ago, your longtime youth and family minister, Gary, left to pursue a new call in Texas. And so this word change became a new reality at CLC. Then I arrived here on Monday in June to head to camp on that Wednesday and then to the mission trip on that Sunday. I know, more change for me and CLC. And in February we heard about a virus. It was coming. Little did we know how much change this would bring to our, to our everyday lives. So here's my rhetorical question. What significant change has happened in your life? if you take COVID-19 out of it. My guess is several significant changes have happened. I know you all realize that change is one of the most difficult things that we adults have to deal with. The mo as, and most of us, quite frankly, don't like it. It's disruptive, it's unsettling, and it's a little scary. It's the unknown. Being in youth ministry now for some 25 years, I see change in our youth frequently. They too have challenges with it, but change is what their lives are all about. From the time they're born until adulthood, whatever that really is, they change. As babies, they change from week to week, diaper size to diaper size, bottle to strain food and then solid. Then out of the crib and the stroller because we can walk and you have to baby proof everything in your house. Then off to school and away from the parents for a little while each day. More change. They grow and leave the blankie or teddy behind and the diapers and the sippy cups. In school they have to meet new kids and teachers, maybe ride the bus, and then they grow out of their favorite jacket or shirt, give up their truck or dolly, and maybe even sit at the big table. Then junior high and, oh my, all sorts of changes begin, physically, mentally, emotionally. They go to a school where you move from class to class and parents aren't so smart anymore. What's up with that? It's sort of a terrible twos all over again. Then high school and dating, boyfriends, girlfriends, driver's licenses, jobs, getting further away from the family unit, more change. And then college and a real job and a first apartment and maybe even marriage. So as youth, their lives are just one big continual change. 
Then we become adults and the word change, well, we think it's somehow sort of over. Maybe. The gospel that I chose for today, which you may recall from Pastor Gail last week, Matthew 14, 23, is my favorite story about change. It's really my favorite Bible story of all. Peter walking on water, leaving his and your comfort zone of the boat, your life, to step into the unknown world and using faith as your guide. Many like to think of this story as the lack of faith and the lack of trust in God. But for me, this story is quite the opposite. Peter said to Jesus, call to me and I'll come to you, Lord. That's a lot more faith than I've ever shown. Peter is a person. People don't walk on water. I'm sure other than that moment, Peter never witnessed anyone walking on water. That's a lot of faith. That's a definite change of view. And then after a few steps, all those reality thoughts, my guess, came rushing into his head. Whoa, this shouldn't be working. People don't take strolls across the ocean. He started to sink. Peter, a very strong-willed soul, called out, Lord, help me. And again, from what I know of Peter, he was not the kind of guy to ask for help. So more change in this, in, in this person. And of course, Jesus reached out his hand immediately, it says, as he helped his friend. Now, the line is, why do you have so little faith? But did he really have little faith? He got out of the boat, and he was the only one that did. And he walked on water. Seems to me to be, pretty, be a pretty big deal. Seems to me to be a lot of faith. Isaiah 43, starting with the 18th verse, says, Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Change is all about new things and trusting in God to show us the way. John F. Kennedy said, Change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. I don't want to miss the future. Our youth at CLC are, are the present and that future, and they've been watching us through this whole process of change as well as we've been watching each other. What have we all learned from one another about this process of change and how we handle it? Is it what we hoped they would have learned? Hoped what we would have learned? Did we teach them something positive, something worthwhile, something from God? Did we learn something positive, something worthwhile, something from God? The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking, says Albert Einstein. I believe God is all about change, and I believe until we are uncomfortable, there is no change. The uncomfortable is the joy of youth ministry for me, being able to offer experiences that take us out of our comfort zones so that we can experience the change in ourselves and our perceptions and our faith. Mission trips are a prime example, but so are backpacking trips at camp or just a week of camp. And certainly the ELCA Youth Gathering with 30,000 other youth is a life-changing adventure. Serving others in food banks and at a Halloween party at Field Elementary. The first reaction about most of these things and doing something new and different is always, but I don't know anyone. Then I've never been there before. And the ever popular, but I'm afraid. And there is the opening God is looking for to change our hearts. That vulnerability to allow that change into your heart, to see things a little differently, and to see people differently from your previous per perception. So yes, here we go again. Change. Be excited about it. You have new opportunities, new growth, new directions. 
Connor will be the very breath of fresh air CLC has been praying for. You'll be out of your comfort zone for a little while. It just means you'll be growing. God is teaching you a new perspective. You have gotten out of your boat. Embrace it. Embrace it like you hug your grandparents deeply. We should pray we have taught our youth and each other about looking to that future. We don't want to miss it. We should pray we look to each other, to our leaders here at CLC, and we continue to support and encourage them to lead us. We should pray we listen very well for that small, still voice of God, because God will guide us if we listen. We should remember the life of Christ was full of change and know that as Christ rose again that beautiful Easter morning, so too will this youth and family ministry rise to new spirituality, new adventures. We will find our way through whatever change God has given and will give us. I'd like to reread the gospel from the message to give you a little different perspective. As soon as the meal was finished, he insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to another side, while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late into the night. Meanwhile, the boat was far out to sea when the wind came up against them and they were battered by the waves. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. They were scared out of their wits. A ghost, they said, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, he said, it's me. Don't be afraid. Peter, suddenly bold, said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come ahead. Jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on the water to, Je water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hand. Then he said, Faint heart, what got into you? The two of them climbed into the boat, and the wind died down. The disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshipped Jesus, saying, This is it. You are God's Son for sure. We should pray for all of us to embrace, welcome, and see the opportunity of the change God has given us as the blessing it truly is. And it begins with getting out of the boat. Amen.
Let us confess our faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forest, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help us, Lord, to care for your creation, ourselves and all of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and town, and for those who need your healing, especially all those we mention to you now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant Christ Lutheran Church the grace to find our life refreshed in you, accompanying us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us calm, patience, and discernment during this time of uncertainty and pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself, especially all those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So at this time, we have a blessing for our school children, for our teachers and administrators, and for the parents. If there's someone in your home with you that you would like to bless, like if you have a student in your home, I invite you to... Put your hand on their shoulder and students 
if when it comes time to bless a parent or if you have a teacher or an administrator in your home, feel free to put your hand on their shoulders. For the rest of us, just feel free to reach out and let us pray for this upcoming school year. Let us pray. Bless our children, O oh Lord, as they begin this new school year. Bless their minds that they be amazed by new learnings. Inspire in them the cup confidence to trust that they can learn new things and tackle the assignments given to them. Bless their hearts as they meet new people, learning how to graciously accept others in this family of God and accepting their own God-given gifts as being unique and worthy. Bless their bodies, O oh Lord, keeping them safe and healthy, eager to grow, learn, and develop. Be with them in their challenges. Let them experience satisfaction, fun, and joy in these days and months ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our teachers and administrators, O oh Lord, with all of the challenges that lay before them. We ask your wisdom and guidance be placed upon them. They are juggling the demands of healthy choices for the schools with the concerns and opinions of parents and society. They look forward to the excitement of a new school year, yet are bound by necessary restrictions due to COVID. They are guiding our children and influencing lives. Bless them, O oh Lord, with your strength, grace, and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the parents, gracious and loving God, and for all who are parenting children, youth, and young adults who are beginning school or returning to school this year. Our parents and those who are parenting always need our prayers, support, and compassion, but especially so this year. Pour your grace upon them, O Lord, and help them experience joy in the parenting process. Surround them with those who will offer support in prayers. May their families grow in grace and in mercy as they learn new things this coming year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for these and for all your prayers, O Lord, in your name. Amen. We pray that all of you have a wonderful week, that you're blessed, that you experience God's joy in your lives. One quick sending announcement I have is that if you haven't yet sent in the picture of your hands, we want to do a laying on, uh, laying on of hands for Jeff Kelty. So please take that picture right away today and send it to office at clchr.org so that we can have this collage to give him next week. Thanks, everyone.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.